Good day everyone! Today we're talking about Juan de Placencia's customs of Tagalog. So who is Juan de Placencia? His full name is Fray Juan de Placencia and he's a Spanish Franciscan friar who was born to the illustrious family of Puerto Carrero and Placencia in the region of Extremadura and it is in Spain in early 16th century. Fray Juan de Placencia grew in the period of Sigla de Oro which inspired him to join the Franciscan order. So what is the Franciscan order? It is any member of a Roman Catholic religious order founded in the early 13th century by St. Francis of Assisi. The Franciscan order is one of the four great mendicant orders of the church and its members strive to cultivate the ideals of poverty. One of the entered the Franciscan conventuals in Italy and later joined the observant Franciscans of Santiago on his return to Spain. So okay, now let's talk about the journey of Juan de Placencia. When he did get back in Spain, he was given a task by the king, and this task was to document and record the traditions and customs of Filipino people. He will record and document these customs and traditions by the Filipino people according to his own judgment and observation. Juan de Placencia has a goal by recording the traditions and cultures of the Filipino people. His goal is to put an end to some injustices committed against the native by certain government officials. When he was visiting areas, he had conversations with the natives that made him interested about the native language and the foundation of the numerous towns. Together with Fray Diego de Presa, who is another friar, they both start preaching around Laguna de Bay area and as far as Tayabas, which is now known the Quezon province. As one of his pledges leading a lifestyle devoid of any luxury and constant contact with the people, he was trying to convert to Christianity. Friar Juan de Placencia was also known as a believer and defender among the native population. He was looking after the poor, the ill, or neglected, and standing up their rights on numerous occasions which leads him to write the said work. So now, we'll be discussing the background. So, this is about the background of the customs of Tagalogs in terms of discovery in the traditions, cultures, and beliefs of the natives or the Filipinos. So how it is written, what we have observed with the people involved during his stay in the country. So even though it was a mission for them to be granted, he made his own move, thoroughly informed himself in regard of the people's requests and carefully concluded his observation in the living state of natives because during the time when he entered the country, he became with the people. He, he, he understood that we have different beliefs and struggles compared to them. So what he did was to be part of the people to understand to understand their, their cultures and beliefs because he was aware that there is a contradiction between the Indians' reports and controversies within the acculturation. So, given that the country is not actually stable that time, there are actually differences in terms of beliefs. That's why he nearly need to be with the people in order to understand them. Now, he collected Indians from different districts, men, and those most of capacity, and from them he obtained the truth. After weeding, weeding, weeding out much foolishness in regard to their government, administration of justice, inheritance, slaves, and, and dowries. So basically, um, Placentia took different people of different places, of different status in life, to understand different struggles and to accumulate the truth between, between the people. Because the slaves, the datus, are very different from each other. Therefore, he need to understand their differences and learn the status of the hierarchy in our country. Next. Uh, so, he claimed that the Tagalog population did not fully embrace Catholicism, but they appropriated it according to their indigenous religious beliefs. Because um, before even we have the Catholicism, the country have different cultures and beliefs in their religion. We actually have, um, we actually, uh, we actually worship not only one God but different God. But, but. During the Catholicism, they, they introduced us that there should supposedly one God only, and we actually not fully embraced that thought, but, but appropriated it according to our belief. The ritualistic and superstitious beliefs of Tagalog were mocked by Placentia, given that it is very superstitious compared to what 
they believe and they don't believe in the when they don't believe in Manananga because what that's what the doctrine says. So basically, plus and should just mark us based on what we actually believe. So next, so the next part is what the book is all about. So the book tackles the everyday living of the ancient Filipinos, the social status such as the novelty or the barangay, commoners and slaves, customs, cultures, and traditions or beliefs about our gods, devils, witches, burials, and their beliefs of afterlife. We as a Tagalog. So next is that he has learned the district levels and differences of the early Filipino natives in particular to their social classes and how the different issues behind the preceded na cultural knowledge affects the civilization during this time. So actually we believe in the hierarchy of datus going down to the slaves. So he he learned how that was happened. So this would be discussed next by the next reporters. Okay, next is that uh, although Placentia on, only observed these customs and traditions, he managed to give a picture of how early Filipinos think and live by the customs and traditions. So given, so as why I mentioned earlier, he became with the people. Given that, he understood us. He managed to give a picture of how, early, of how we think we live by our customs and traditions. That's wow. That's what happened during the stay of Placentia in our country. So now we will be discussing the content next. Um, okay, so let, now let's talk about Datu. So what is Datu? Datu is the title for chief sovereign princesses and monarchs in the Philippines together with Dalacan in Luzon, um, Apo in the central and northern Luzon, Sultan and Draha, and there are titles used for native royalties and are still currently used in the Philippines depending upon the prestige of the sovereign prince and this title of Datu could be equated to Riopan Dukes, um, Moeteses, Counts, and Barons. Um, in the barangays which we had contacts with other Southeast Asian culture through trade, um, some Datus took, in took the title Raha or Sultan. So here are some of the examples of Datus here in the Philippines during the pre um, Spanish colonial. Here is Lapu-Lapu, which is he is the king of Mactan. Um, Raja Colambu, the king of Limasawa. Sultan Kudarat of Maguindanao. Um, Datu Dumangsil of Taal. Datu Puti, the Lakandula of Tondo. Da, Datu Dalisan, which is the king of Mansasa. So those are the Datus here in the Philippines. So, so Datus are akin to the Malay people which means Datu or Datu, which are royal of the Malay people and to the Fihan title of Ratu. It came into use in the Philippines during the pre-colonial period through the migrations of Malay to what is to what is now the what we call Philippine archipelago. So now let's also talk about the barangay and the social classes which are the nobles, slaves, and the commoner or the what we call the freemen. So in barangay, it is the earliest form of governance, governance in the Philippines. It was an independent settlement consisting of 30 or up to 100 families which usually situated along the river bank or along the seashore. The word barangay is derived from the Malay word barangay or balang, balangay which means a sailboat. So the barangay were used to transport the early Filipinos and their cargoes to the various section of the Philippine archipelago. archipelago. <laughs> there, are, there are three cases system in the barangay which are the nobles, freemen, or the commoner and the slaves. So the nobles are the supreme family, includes the Datu, the Hari, Reina, the Lakan, and Lakandula. They are the ones ruling the barangay. They own different properties and they have their own alipin or slaves. The customs of the Tagalogs by Juan de Placentia also consist of worship of Tagalogs, wherein there's no temples but there is simbahan the temple or place of adoration, which is also called Pandot or the festival celebrated Sibi, Sorihile, and Nagainitos. 
There is what we call idols, which consists of Bathala, Likha, Dayan Masalanta, patron of lovers of the, of the generation, which is also called Lakapati and Adayanale, the patrons of cultivated lands and of the husbandry. Next is Tala, seven little goats or the plates, Mapalon, change of seasons, Palatik, greater beer, Buaya, Tagaminogin, bird, or no established division of years, months, and days. The Katulolan officially called a priest, offerings and sacrifices, and also they believe on bearing child. Idols also consist of Katulolan, Mangaway or witches, Mayanesilat, Monokolam, Hoklobam, Silagan, Matatanggal, Osuwang, Mangoyoma, Sonat, Pangatahonan, Buyogin, and distinction, and distinction among the priests of the devil. This originally worked itself as a product of observation and judgment. Therefore, it is probable that one de Placentia's work might contain prototality in presenting his observations and judgments. In conclusion, the main objective of Placentia when he composed the customs of Tagalogs is to put an end to some injustices being committed against the natives by certain government officials. As a friar, one de Placentia lived up to his pledge, leading a lifestyle devoid of any luxury and in constant contact with the people he was trying to convert to Christianity. And next, the Tagalog uh, customs written by Fray de Placentia is one of the most important primary sources of the Philippine history. It tackles the everyday lives of the ancient Filipinosum, which includes their system of government, their social statuses, and their customs, traditions, and especially their beliefs or our beliefs. Overall, um, this document is important for determining how the Spaniards will govern the Filipinos during the Spanish era. Although it has a lesser value in the modern world right now, it is still important for us to trace the roots of who we are in the past. So, balikan natin yung past kasi may matututon tayo dun. Now, Let's take a glimpse to the application part of what is asked today. The Facebook is talking the profile who inculcated as the thought catechism is very important in missionary is somehow thrilling to do as we, the Filipino citizen, shall encapsulate the sacrifices and the works of this influential person, Juan de Puerta Carrero, or known as Juan de Pacencia. From the word origin, uh, this would be answering the four W's, who, when, where, and what, who created the source, when was it written, where was the source produced, and what type of document it is. To start with, as he digested uh, the stories of Pinoy's adapting the changes in culture and governing status, he stayed in Quezon Laguna, Rizal, and Bulacan. Also, Juan de Placencia was born in Spain and his real name is Joan de Porta Carrero as indicated with his profile, simplifying the reality that he is not a Pinoy. And amidst all the realities of life that we have an important role to activate in Earth, Placentia buried six feet below the ground in Liliu, Laguna at the year 1590. Pasensya na lang, ganyan talaga ang buhay, wala tayong magagawa. And digging in, he is the author of the Relacion de las Contumbres the last Tagalog or the customs of um, Tagalog and he is a friar came from Franciscan who arrived with the first batch of missionaries in the Philippines in uh, 1578 so take note 1578 siya unang 
dumating dito sa Pilipinas. And today, we are the stepping stone of the future generations because of his work. Why? Because he is responsible for the acceleration of Christianity, which is widely known and classified amongst here in our country. So, uh, as we take or as we take a step on his legacy, we must have the will to live and be our own model, planting faith to everybody. And with this continuous interaction with the people, adding Father Fray Diego de Oropesa, which assigned to do mission works in the southern Tagalog area, nearly Calabarzon, uh, they vividly discuss the political, social, economic, and cultural practices of the Filipino before they were Christianized, like uh, the social classes or the social categories of people, the, uh, like the upper, middle, and the working and the underclass, that creates a huge barrier and chain of unfreedom to every Filipino people. But the question and challenge, how to make the articles of faith comprehensible to people who have never heard of Christ or the Catholic Church, especially to the Filipinos living in indigenous religions? With the mindset of these missionaries, of course, to put it simply, being a missionary uh, takes a lot of courage. Minsan kapag may nakikita tayo dyan na missionary na nagbabike, or nakaputi, minsan nabubulyawan pa natin sila. And they consume all the struggles and the aroma of merely giving up but putting the belief that catechism or explaining the basic tenets of the Catholic faith is another important function of a missionary. And I think this factor encapsulates the sacrifices and endeavor of these preachers. And adding the interrogative sentence, where was the source found? Where was it written? And the original document of Customs of Tagalog was uh, currently kept in the Archivo General de Indias in Seville, Spain. So if you are wondering kung ano ang lugar na ito, graduate muna tayo at pupuntaan so natin yan. But uh, this place is consists of architectural buildings, libraries, and history, uh, or what do we call that? The museums. And this is a historical treasure. So to keep it secured and assured, they produce a duplicated copy stored in the Archive Franciscano Ibero Oriental in uh, Madrid, Spain. Um, next year's after his arrival in the Philippines in 1578, the customs of the Tagalog was written in 1589 during the Spanish colonial period when he was tasked by the king of Spain to record and document the customs and traditions of the people of the Philippines on the basis of his own, own observations and judgments. And as the product, Christianity is widely known, not just in the Philippines, but also to the other nation. It is a part, or either chapters or subsections, of longer monographs uh, written by the chronicles of the uh, Spanish expeditions to the Philippines during the early 16th and 17th centuries. So, tingnan mo naman. Naging parte pa siya ng... Uh, chroniclers ng mga Spain and it also provided the first form of civil code used by local governors to administer justice meaning this is an eye opener to every citizen and this actions pave a way of what we are today imagine mo na lang uncivilized tayo din ako na si Easy na sa lower class na tao na pinagbibili lang pinagpapasapasahan lang tapos iniiwan at pinapabayaan. Sabay, walang kalayaan. O, saan ka pa? Gusto, gustuin mo ko ba yun? Siyempre, walang may gusto nun, di ba? And to put it simply, these works transform the nation in terms of culture, tradition, and governing aspects, especially, it is the path for the development of our country, which enumerates how his works help us to the grand Spanish narrative as civilizer and the savior of our doomsouls from eternal cruelty.
So that's it. Hit the like button. So now we are going to discuss the purpose of the customs of the Tagalogs. As is stated in the previous report, what is the background of the document, it also has a purpose. What is the intent of the document of the artifact? What was really the intention of Placentia in doing this document? The document was written for the Spaniards for them to be aware and have a deep understanding about the pre-colonial Filipinos, their beliefs, traditions, in which they aim to supply a clear portrayal and depiction of the life of the pre-colonial natives in general. It also aims to preserve the native traditions whereas ethnic groups such as Cebuano, Ilocano, Tagalog, Bicolano, and such. They are also aimed to preserve the customs of ancient Filipinos. During the colonization period, Placentia wrote numerous ancient traditions and customs as a guide for the Alcade mayors to settle the disputes among native Filipinos. He wrote it as he is dissatisfied with the justice system of ancient Filipinos where he aims to expose the truth about the existence of inequality and discrimination among the social classes and put an end into the injustices committed by certain government officials against the natives. However, this document also serves as a basis for the Spaniards to reconstruct and reconfigure the Philippine society and to formulate new laws and policies in the Philippines. This is a great chance for them to have a greater power to rule and control Filipinos during those times. In addition, as the document is solely based on Placentia's own observations and judgments, many parts of the document are one way to show the validity of the colonizer's superiority over the colonized. Furthermore, the customs of the Tagalogs was important for determining how Spaniards will govern the Filipinos during Spanish era, where it contains numerous information that historians could use in reconstructing the political and sociocultural history of the Tagalog region. Who are intended audience? We think that Placentia wrote this for Filipino, yet the truth is, it is intended for the king of Spain. The king tasked him to write about customs of traditions of the Filipino people. The Spaniards took it as guide and basis on how to govern the Philippines and the things to be changed in the Philippine society. However, Although these are the reasons of Placentia in writing about the customs and traditions of the native Filipinos, the succeeding generation has come to know the origin and how the customs and traditions of the Filipino evolve or develop. Although it has lesser value in the modern world right now, it is still important for us to trace the root of who we are in the past. What does the document say? The contents of the documents are about the beliefs, the traditions, and the customs or the pre-colonial life of the native Filipinos. It also talks about the social class, houses, mode of dressing, government or politics, administration of justice, rules, dowries, burial techniques, inheritance, their widely used ornaments, and marriage customs of the native Filipinos. As we all know, during our primary years, the Civica and Cultura subjects teaches us the customs or traditions of the Filipinos even before Spaniards colonized us. Most of those informations came from the written report by Juan de Placentia, who is the author of the customs of the Tagalogs. Furthermore, it also discusses their religious beliefs, superstitious beliefs, economic life and the language and system of writing. However, in terms of religious activities, there are a lot of different methods of worshipping that were done by people in the particular period. First, what can we tell about the time period from this piece? Social classes are divided into chieftain or tatu, nobles, maharlika, commoners, or alipig na mamahay and slaves, aliping sa gigilir. That is what we call a chief or captain of wars who governed, obeyed, and reverence. Nobles or maharlika are considered as freeborn because they do not pay taxes or contribute to the datu. Commoners or aliping na mamahay, they live in their own houses and lords of their property and gold. 
while slaves, a leaping sangigilir, they served their master in his house, and as well as his cultivated lands, and can be sold. Second, houses are made of food, bamboo, and nipa palm. The mode of dressing before, when it comes in meal, they have had gear which is called puto, that symbolizes the number of persons that were had killed. In the upper part is a jacket with short sleeves called kangan, and in the lower part is bahag. Whereas in females, the upper part is baro or kamisa, and in the lower part is saya. When it comes to the unit of government, they call it as barangay, ruled by chieftain and consists of 30 to 100 families together with their relatives and slaves. The chieftain implements laws, ensures order, and provides protection to his people. Disputes between the individuals are settled by a court made up of the chieftain council of elders. When it comes to inheritance, the first son of the barangay chieftain inherits his father's position. If the first son dies, the second son succeeds their inheritance. For the slaves, a person becomes slave by captivity in war, by reason of death, by inheritance, by purchase, and by committing a crime. Also, slaves can be emancipated through forgiveness, paying death, condonation, and by bravery, where slaves can possibly become a datu, or by marriage. Under marriage customs, men were in general monogamous while their wives are called asawa. Courtship begins with paninilpihan, and prior to their ma marriage, the man is required to give a dowry, ubigay kaya, a piece of land or gold. Another is pangihimuyat, a gift for the bride's parents, and also bigay suso, for the bride's wet nurse. Marriage between couples belonging is to different social classes were not common. Several grounds of divorce are adultery, abandonment on the part of husband, and cruelty. In religious belief, they worship many gods and goddesses, including Bathala, Supreme Being, Dayanale, God of Agriculture, Sadirapa, God of Death, Agni of God, or the God of Fire, Balangaw, God of Rainbow, Mandarangan, God of War, Lalahon, God of Harvest, Siginarugan, God of Hell, they also believe in sacred animals and trees. There are also superstitious beliefs. They believe in aswang, duende, capre, balang, and many more. They also believe in magical power of amulet and charms such as anting anting, kulam, gayuma, or love potion. When it comes to economic life, they do plant of rice, corn, banana, coconut, sugar canes, and other kinds of vegetables and fruits. Hunting in highlands, fishing in riverbanks and sea, shipbuilding, weaving, poultry, mining, and lumbering. The domestic trade of different barangays by boat, also they include that. The foreign trade with countries like Borneo, China, Japan, Cambodia, Java, and Thailand. When it comes in language, language are Tagalog, Ilocano, Pangasinan, Kapangpangan, Sugbahonon, Haligaynon, Magindanao, Samarnon. These are the languages that are originated from the Malayo Polynesi Polynesian language. When it comes in writing, they use a top of trace as ink and a pointed stick as pencil and write on large plant leaves, bark of a tree, or bamboo tubes. Also, the alphabets, alphabets consisted of three vowels and 14 consonants called by The next question is, does the author represent a particular side of controversy? The answer is yes. Given the plethora of biases and a great extent, inaccurate judgment or attentions of the author, the text was clearly not written for consumption, but for Western readers. Customs of the Galogs, just like any other colonial text written during the Spanish colonial period, was intentionally made to provide exotized description of the Galog natives, clearly fed by politics and propaganda and operated with the Western outsider gaze. This would be the appealing to them. In the Placentia's account on land ownership, for example, he said that the lands were divided among the barangay and no one belonging to another barangay would cultivate them unless after the purchase of inheritance. However, 
Since the advent of Spaniards, it is not divided. Such a statement implies that the intervention of colonizer has put in order into the divideness. He also made the conclusion that Catholicism was able to expel, expel primitive and evil belief systems of the Tagalogs regarding gods, burials, and superstitions, saying that all Tagalogs are not traces of this theft, and that those who were not marrying do not even know what it is. This claim undermines of the Holy Gospel, which has banished it. This claim undermines also that the Tagalog population did not fully embrace Catholicism, but appropriated it according to their indigenous religious practices. The last question we need to answer is that, what was going on in the time when this particular piece was written? Does it reflect the time period matching with historical events? The answer is yes. Basing to the Asian study an overview of the colonial era, the customs of Tagalog by Juan de Blasencia indeed reflect the time period. According to this study, during the almost 400 years of Spanish rule, various groups remained fiercely independent or indifferent to the colonizer. Some appropriated and reinterpreted Spanish customs, while others toiled as slaves to the empire. As they spread to the islands, Spanish constitutors encountered the variety of religions. During the 16th century, the areas now referred to as Luzon, Visayas, and the cluster of islands were home to several belief systems. These were chronicled by the Christian friars and missionaries who came in contact with them. The famed Philippine historian William Henry Scott in 1994 recounts, for instance, example of Visayans who worship nature spirits god of particular localities or activities and their own assessors, Bicolanos, whose female shamans called Bilian, spoke with the voice of departed spirits and delivered prayers in song, and Tagalogs whose pation included Lakapati fittingly represented by Hermaphrodite. This image is both male and female parts, who was worshipped in the field of planting at time. By the 18th century, indigenous people caught practicing so-called pagan rituals were banished. At the same time, local histories written on bamboo or other materials were burned, and cultural artifacts were destroyed. So these are the values and questions in values that we need to coexist. One of Placentia's work is known as a primary source because he is personally there to witness the events and his accounts contain his observations. So there are at least three major discursive issues that can be extracted from the document. The Storms of Tagalog written by Juan de Placentia in 1589. If we are to put social political context into the text, there are some issues, which is first, the issue of authorship, second, the discourse of the power in colonial writing, and third, the logic of binarism, or the, what we call accident. The text is not written for local consumption, but for the Western readers because of the inaccurate judgment to the author. So because of the um, pious and inaccurate judgment, the custom of the Tagalogs, or just like any other local text, was purposely written to provide an exoticized description of the Tagalog natives, clearly fed by the politics and propaganda operated by the Western outsider's case that would be appealing to them.